Praise God. Good Sunday morning and welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday morning. We thank God for the opportunity he has provided to you and me to experience another day. I thank God for today. Our lesson today, our review, topic of review, topic of discussion in your mind, in your home, amongst yourself, is an ordered life. Again, topic of review, an ordered life. Lesson number five, the content of our lesson is based upon Proverbs, the 29th chapter, verses 16 through 27, on this 3rd of October, the year 2021. Thank God again, as for stated, for him giving us another opportunity to experience his wonder, hallelujah, to experience his grace and mercy, keeping us one more day. I thank God for the leaders of Unity Church of God in Christ, our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. Thank God and again welcome you, our Facebook friends, our YouTube friends. Thank you for joining in, tuning in. You are at the right place on this Sunday morning. We thank God for Sunday School Superintendent Deacon Joe Daniels and his companion right there by his side, helping to make sure that you and I, hallelujah, we have what we need from a literature perspective to study God's Word by way of Sunday School. We thank God again for Deacon Joe Daniels, and I thank God continuously for the opportunity to stand before you and share our Sunday School topic in review each Sunday. I thank God for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. I thank God again for his faithfulness. He is not slack concerning his promises to his people. Hallelujah. Has he given me the strength and the ability to be here every Sunday morning, I also thank him for doing the same thing to you. Hallelujah. It is not by chance or any good deeds that we have done, but it is because of God's mercy and his goodness and his kindness that we get up every single morning. Hallelujah. And for that, I thank him not only for the opportunity to arise and to live, but for the opportunity to learn and to improve in every day he has created. Our Bible truth, our Bible application, and our Bible learning are as follows. Bible truth, God calls us to trust in him as our source for an order life. Hallelujah. Bible application to desire to change actions that push outside of godly principles. And our Bible learning to know what the Bible says about those things that cause disarray in our lives. Out of everything we learn today, the most important is to trust God, to trust God to order every single step in our lives, hallelujah, and to eliminate, to change the actions that are contrary to the directions, to the instructions of God, hallelujah, to change those actions, to push those influences out of our mind, out of our lives, out of the circumference of our surroundings. Praise God. And to know 
when you do not do these things, what the Bible says about things that cause disarray. Hallelujah. As forestated, the goal is to push things that cause chaos, push things that cause disarray out of our lives. And the only way to do so is trusting and acknowledging and asking God for his help and direction. Our memory verse, Proverbs, the 29th chapter, verse 25. We will read the NI, excuse me, the King James Version and the New International Version, respectively. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. That's King James Version. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. That's the New International Version. Praise God. As is customary, we will speak to, we will refer to, we will explain further <laughs> as we continue on. Hallelujah. But we know in this life we live, we are not fearful of man. Our hope, our trust, our faith, our confidence. Hallelujah. Everything that we stand upon, everything that upholds us is, hallelujah, God. It is only God, it is only his son and the spirit that abides, hallelujah, in us. A snare, snare, snare is a trap for catching, typically one having a noose, wire, or cord. Scripture states that when you trust and are fear man, hallelujah, when you fear man above God, when your goal is to please man, and I do not want to get too far ahead of myself, but when we see our actions and reactions promoted by fear of what someone will think, or what they will do, the end result is a snare. And again, it is a trap. Typically, one having a noose, wire, or cord, a snare is something that will trap you. It will block you from what is supposed to be, what will come your way. When you put faith and trust in man over what God can do, God who is in control of all things, the end result is you will end up in a trap. Hallelujah. The meaning of snare, again, references multiple things. So people of God, you will end up in multiple traps various types. When you trust man, when you have confidence in man over confidence in God. Praise God, our lesson aim. By the end of this lesson, we will collectively know the relationship between an orderly life and trust in God. We will also feel what it means to live an ordered life and we will create a strategy based upon godly principles to live an ordered life. Our lesson aim, there are words from this week that are redundant and are were referenced last week. Hallelujah. Our lesson is instructing us the importance of when you have words that are repeated and are redundant 
it is stressing the importance of, hallelujah, our lesson aim this week is stressing the importance of knowing, knowing, being aware of, knowing because of investigation, knowing because you have been informed, knowing because you have observed, hallelujah, feel, Feel was also a word that was used last week, showing emotion or sensitivity. But going beyond that, doing more than talking about, but identifying with, feeling, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We're talking about an ordered life. When God is in control, not only do you talk it, but you walk it and you feel it. It comes from the inside out. Hallelujah. And when you know and when you feel, then you can create. Create is causing something to happen as a result of your actions. Our lesson today is going to help us do what is necessary to implement an ordered life, hallelujah, in this world in which we exist. If your life today appears to be chaotic and there is no order, there is no structure, you are walking and going through life aimlessly, you are not happy, Hallelujah. You have no purpose. Your actions are unfulfilled. This lesson today helps ensure that you and I are aligned. Hallelujah. With the gospel of Jesus Christ and the life that he's given us. The life in which we can live more abundantly. Hallelujah. His word today gives guidance and instruction to ensure that our path is successful. Hallelujah. To ensure you and I have the tools necessary to create, hallelujah, something different in our lives. To create a different path. Hallelujah. Our lesson aim also lets us know that a strategy is necessary. I use the word often. We've been using it often in our Bible study and in our Sunday school lesson, the word strategy. Strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term goal and our overall aim. Our goal is to see Jesus. Our goal is to meet him. Our goal is to get along peaceably with all men and women here in this present world because without holiness and getting along with individuals and treating people fairly, hallelujah, we will not meet our long-term goal, and that is to see Jesus. Hallelujah, but there are some short-term things we must achieve in order to meet that long-term goal. And treating one another fairly is one of those short-term goals. As you're on a long-time journey, there are multiple short time goals that ensure your path to the long time is successful. If you're not about, <laughs> if your actions don't promote success in the short term, hallelujah, you need to ask God for help today to develop, to give you help, which he is doing by this lesson. Hallelujah, to implement a strategy for an ordered life. It is okay, again, if there's disarray. It is acceptable if there is chaos. 
Hallelujah. But, but, but the lesson today has an answer. Jesus Christ is that answer. And with him, hallelujah, he can bring order into a life where there is nothing but chaos. Hallelujah. He can give you help to create something different in your life, a new path, a new action that will result favorably for you. The goal is, hallelujah, you must acknowledge, you must seek him first in order to meet that long-term goal. An ordered life, an ordered life, ordered is giving an authoritative direction or instruction to do something. Ordered, again, an ordered life. We have been given instruction to do. Hallelujah. Order suggests when one provides order, when order is suggested, it is straightening out something that could cause fusion. It is straightening out something that possibly may cause confusion. It is straightening out things to mitigate and to eliminate confusion. When there is order, there is no chaos. Hallelujah. When we have order in our life, glory to God, it eliminates chaos. People of God, if there's chaos in your life, follow Christ. Seek Jesus. Follow his word because his word commands and dictates and shows a clear outline of what you and I can do to ensure our life and the path that we follow is ordered. Now our life is our very existence. Our life is our purpose. Why we are here. Do you know your purpose? Do you know why you are here? Hallelujah. Again, we can ask God today to help us, to help you, to ensure your purpose, to ensure your path, to ensure your short and long-term goals. Hallelujah. Reflect those of someone who is living an ordered life. Again, ordered represents straightening out. Ordered represents eliminating chaos. Our lessons come to us. The scripture comes to us to help eliminate, mitigate, remove confusion and chaos from our lives. We have the power. We have the tools. We have the ability to control what impacts us and how we go through it. But we must seek him. We must seek God to ensure that our life is orderly. Hallelujah. My question today is, how are you living? How are you living? Are you living an ordered life? Or is your life full of chaos? Hallelujah. Not only you. We learned a few weeks ago your actions. Yes, you speak to you and what you do. But in many instances, we're leaders. In many instances, our family and our home, our loved ones and friends, community are looking at us as examples. Again, how are you living? 
What is your life reflecting? Is it reflecting a life of order or one of chaos? Hallelujah. I look at today's lesson, an ordered life we have in the world today, order <laughs> through traffic and navigation systems. We have a system with red and green lights. Red and green lights tell us as we navigate in whatever city you're in, whatever country you're in, there are red and green lights that tell you when to stop and when to go. Hallelujah. Our lessons have been coming to us this series speaking about wisdom, when to display wisdom, when to seek wisdom, hallelujah, and the benefits of wisdom. Again, people of God, an ordered life is, is accomplished when order is properly implemented. When you properly follow the rules and apply them to your life, then we have order. In this world we live, we go by red and green lights. When we act out and do not follow the order of that red and our green light, we create chaos. We create accidents, some small, some large. The severity of the accidents that create, hallelujah, that also differs. Some accidents take away life. Oh God, and some impede and are impact life. I'm telling you people of God, it is imperative. I use that word imperative often, but it is critical that you and I make sure that our lives are ordered because if we do not, oh, glory to God, our actions might be causing accidents in other people's lives. Our actions might be causing death in someone else. Let's make sure our life and the navigation thereof is ordered by God. Our footsteps are ordered. We're acknowledging him in all our ways again to ensure that our movements, our left, our right, our back, our forward, they're ordered and they're not creating chaos. Hallelujah. Today's lessons outlines two paths, path of wisdom and a path of folly. The path of wisdom, hallelujah, the path of order. When you have that path, when you know you are knowledgeable, you have understanding, you have discretion, you are willing to display obedience and you listen to instruction. Hallelujah and or you can follow that path of folly, paying no attention to the red and or the green lights in life. Folly represents everything that contradicts the opposite. Everything that wisdom rep does not represent, folly does. Hallelujah, if you have no knowledge, if you have no understanding, if you have no discretion, if you have no obedience, if you do not follow instruction, your life is not ordered. Your life is chaotic. Your life is causing destruction and distress for those around you. Again, how are you living today? Part one of our lesson, God commands self-control. Again, part one of our lesson today, God commands self-control. Proverbs 29, verses 16 through 22. 
Again, command is an authoritative order. And self-control is the quality that allows you, the quality that allows me to stop ourselves from doing what we want to do. To stop doing things that are not in our best interest. Self-control. Hallelujah. God commands self-control. And what God commands, God will help to make sure that we can accomplish what he commands. Our lesson begins in glory to God, in mid-chapter, in that 16th verse. However, that 28th chapter, that entire chapter of that 28th book of Proverbs provides a great contrast of, between behaviors of the wicked and the righteous. The 29th chapter in many verses, in many instances, speaks to some of the actions and conditions referenced in chapter 28. As I always instruct us, People of God, it is best for you to read and study God's word for yourself, rightly able to divide his word, able to read it, comprehend, understand, and apply it to your life. I would advise you to read that 28th chapter of Proverbs and the 29th in their entirety, but I'd also encourage you to read the entire book of Proverbs as I've been doing since we began this lesson series. Hallelujah. God commands self-control. The actions of wise and foolish. Again, talking about verses 16 through 22. That verse 16 begins with when the wicked are multiplied, are increased. When the wicked are increased, when their day of, hallelujah, some people have heyday and are season of. <laughs> I think in my own mind, we just ended a season, our era of a wicked leader, <laughs> a wicked president. <laughs> when wicked when the wicked are multiplied, are they increase transgressions, increase as well. Rebellion increases as well. Sin against God, it increases. Why? Because the wicked, hallelujah, are seasonally, temporarily in charge. And they promote everything that is ungodly. Hallelujah. Wickedness breeds transgression against God. Wicked equates to evil or morally wrong living. And although the scripture references the fact that it is, and there's a possibility and seasons happen where it is increased it is only temporary. Hallelujah. The reign of the wicked is only temporary. Why? Because that same scripture references the fact that the righteous, all who are righteous, regardless of who you are, regardless of your name, it says all who are righteous. It doesn't reference a title or anything. The scripture says all who are righteous shall see the fall of the wicked. Hallelujah. So as we go through this life of practicing and applying good and bad, hallelujah, applying good principles and staying away from the bad principles, don't be concerned. Don't be discouraged. There will be times when it 
appears that the enemy might be victorious. But oh, hallelujah, people of God, sin is only for a season. Glory to God, but the scripture says those that are righteous shall see it come to an end. Do not be discouraged on your path of right. Hallelujah, and pursuing what is right, doing what is right, looking out for what is right. Hallelujah, because you shall see the end of the wicked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The scripture in Jeremiah 29 11 tells us that our actions, hallelujah, when we do right, he knows what our end will be. It will be a good end. Hallelujah. But for those who do wrong, their actions will also have an end. And it will be in hell fire. Hallelujah. Again, the actions of the righteous, those will override. <laughs> those will extend beyond the actions of the wicked, the actions of the ungodly. Again, why? Because the righteous shall see their very actions end. Hallelujah. They shall see them end. So keep on, continue on doing what is right. Follow the strategy on how to be victorious in life's journey. The enemy, we are here talking today about strategizing. We've been talking in the last few weeks about following wisdom and not folly. Listening to, seeking God, seeking his direction, seeking his guidance. These are all tools to help us properly strategize so that we can make it, so our neighbor can make it, so our loved one can make it, so our family member can make it. But people of God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God. And I want to let you know, just as we're strategizing, the devil is also. He has people that are strategizing as well for your downfall. How? 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 Praise God. Is that possible? People of God, this battle, again, that we're in is real. This is a life and death situation. Hallelujah. Our scriptures are coming to us. Our lessons are coming to us, letting us know that this is forever. This impacts our eternity. So just as critical as it is for you and I to make it in and do everything possible we can by trusting, praying, and seeking God, the enemy is also doing what he can to make sure that we do not. Hallelujah. But the scripture says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm letting you know today, time is up for being lazy. Time is out. Hallelujah. These are the last days. God is commanding self-control. If you have no self-control, if you find yourself with a case of the can't help it, ask God for help. Ask God for his direction. Ask God for his wisdom to help you strategize, to stay away from, to remove yourself from the contaminants in your life. Push those things out and away from you, hallelujah, that would make you act contrary to his word. Hallelujah. Be wise. Be smart. 
be encouraged. Hear, see, listen to what God is saying to his people. Hallelujah. Discipline. When you have self-control, you are demonstrating discipline. Discipline shares the root word with disciple. It means to teach and to, to guide. People of God, again, it is critical. You realize that we are disciples. We are not only teaching, but we're learning and we're guiding. We're doing all of these things at the same time under the guidance and instruction of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The goal is to ensure that we do so successfully and we do so without running into brick walls. Hallelujah. We do so without all the chaos that life has to bring when there is no order. People of God, the way of God is right. Hallelujah. There should be no chaos in your life. We have challenges and situations that arise and develop. But if your life is chaotic, again, and there is no order, you need to ask God for some order. You need to ask God for some self-discipline. Hallelujah. Some self-control. And he will grant it. Going on, God commands self-control. Verses 16 through 22, again, gives concise analysis in that 29th chapter, good versus bad behavior. Hallelujah. Correct your son, correct your daughters. <laughs> People of God, speak what is right. Talk to your children. Talk to your family. Talk to your loved ones. Hallelujah. Bring order into the life around you. As God brings order in our life, hallelujah, we also in our actions demonstrate how to implement order in the lives of or others. Again, chaos is not productive for anyone. People of God, correct your children. If you don't, someone else will. If you do, the scripture is giving information for you. If you do, they will be wise. If you speak to your children, give them the reality of life and positive ways that that they should go, positive things they should implement and do, they will live their lives accordingly. Train up a child in the way he or she should go and believe you me, they will remember what you have taught them. Hallelujah. When you are candid, when you are frank with your own when you do not excuse them because they're yours, hallelujah, you will, hallelujah, be glad in later years. I'm a living witness. I was brought up in the way that I should be brought up. And you've often heard me say, but I strayed away. I strayed away for 20 plus years, but I was yet trained. My parents told me what was right versus what was wrong. And although I lived a chaotic existence where there was no order for over 21 years, hallelujah, when you train a child up right, they remember. And I thank God for his allowing me to remember. And by remembering, and by their instruction and by the direction of my parents, I was able to apply 
with the grace of God, with the help of God, self-control. And with that self-control, God's word brought order into my life. Hallelujah. And now my actions are not an embarrassment. And now my actions do not keep my parents up to the wee hours of the night wondering and praying what I'm doing. Hallelujah. An ordered life is important. And it's critical. Hallelujah for the people of God. An ordered life. Talking to your kids. Praise God. Those you love and those around you. My God. But if you don't do it, <laughs> if you allow your children to run off and do as they want to do, and I'm talking children, but God does not allow us to do it. When we are allowed to do what we want to do, when there is no order, when there is chaos, hallelujah, we are consumed. Glory to God. Self-control is a must, and God's word helps us achieve that self-control. Continuing on, 16 through 22. If there is no vision, if there is no leader, if there is no one providing direction, if there is no guidance, if there is utter chaos, then the people perish. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. If there is no order in your life, everything you do, the deeds you do, the actions that you pursue, the end result will be your perishing. Hallelujah, you will no longer be here. Your life will be full of chaos. Hallelujah. And your end will not be predictable. Glory to God. The goal today again is for us to pursue a predictable path to pursue a path that we seek God and his direction, to pursue a path where we go through trials and tribulations, but as we go through, we are successful. Hallelujah, to go through where we are receiving warnings. Hallelujah, and instruction from God in advance of how to get through a situation and when we're in communication with him, if time comes where the situation, hallelujah, gets too much for us to bear, he provides a way for us to escape again because God is ordering our footsteps. Hallelujah. But when there is no vision, when there is no one we're following, when we are not pursuing any type of order in our lives, chaos exists. Hallelujah. And the end result of chaos is perishing. There is no existence in chaos. There is no longevity in chaos. There is, hallelujah, absolutely nothing you can achieve in a world of chaos and no order. You are lost. Again, people of God, I'm going to ask you the question, how are you living? Is there any control in your life? Again, you may not have what is necessary to bring control and order to your life, but all you have to do today is surrender to God Ask God to help you. Hallelujah. And he will do it. He will bring order into your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
when you are in chaos, when you are in a world of disarray where there is no order, more often than not, you have nowhere to go. More often than not, you are homeless. You have no hope. You have no one who cares for you because, again, there is no order. <laughs> and when there is no order, there is no existence. Are you barely living today? Are you happy? Is there any hope? Hallelujah. Again, I would implore you to seek God today. Hallelujah. Seek God today. If you keep God's law, if you follow his blueprint, we talked about blueprint in previous weeks. Hallelujah. If you follow the directions and principles outlined in Proverbs, hallelujah, you will not transgress God's law. You'll have order in your life, but you will also steer clear of transgressing man's law as well. The scripture notes when you are following God's law, when your life is following order. Hallelujah. You are happy. You don't have to look over your shoulder and wonder when someone is coming to get you. When someone might knock on your door and tell you <laughs> time is up. You must pay for all the chaos that you have in your life. You must pay for all Hallelujah, of the disarray that you have caused. Glory to God. When you follow direction, when there is order in your life, you can go about your everyday routine without worry. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. There are benefits following God. There are benefits to allowing God to order the steps in your life. Hallelujah. One of the biggest benefits is it eliminates chaos. It eliminates confusion. And when those things try to enter, try to introduce themselves, you can apply the wisdom, hallelujah, that you have achieved by going to God and asking him for his direction and help and then implementing the self-control that he has given you. Hallelujah. The goal is for us to treat everyone fairly, to treat everyone right. It takes self-control to treat everyone the same without partiality. God can help you implement that self-control today. Saying it again, hallelujah. When you know to do right and you do not do it, it is a sin when you know to do right and you remain silent, you are wrong. The scripture talks about individuals knowing what is right, hearing what is right, but silently doing wrong. Again, when you know to do right and you are silent, but you continue to openly do wrong, you're doing wrong. Hallelujah, and you're doing it in the sight of God. You may not be verbally saying anything, but your actions themselves display what is, hallelujah, wrong. You are wrong. And people of God, regardless if you're talking it, <laughs> talk and our actions, they both represent sin. 
when you're talking contrary and your actions display something that is contrary to the word of God, then it is sin. When your actions portray that you are treating someone unfairly and hallelujah, you see it happening and do absolutely nothing about it, your silence is also a sin. Hallelujah. Again, God talking self-control. There's a lot of components to self-control. Hallelujah, it's how we interact with others. It's how we act when we're around others. It's how we act when we are by ourselves. It's also about a reaction. Hallelujah, you have to have self-control in every thing you do. We look at the scriptures and we come to church every Sunday. We come for Bible study on Wednesday and we apply the scripture to our lives from a spiritual perspective. But what our lessons is coming to let us know there is no difference, hallelujah, what we do naturally. We should apply spiritual principles to it. When we apply spiritual principles to what we do naturally in our homes, Monday through Sunday, the end result will be profitable for you and I. Hallelujah. And those around us. Praise God. Fast talking. Reacting before thinking. Last week I said slow your roll. Think before you speak. There is more hope in a fool than one who is quick to speak without thinking. Think before you speak, people. Ask God for help before you begin to yelp. Glory to God. All good intentions should be thought out. Thus our lesson advising us to strategize. Strategize by reading, by praying, by studying, by fasting. These things will reinforce your relationship and ensure when you react, hallelujah, your actions will be measured by the word of God. Your reaction will be measured by prayer, hallelujah. Your reaction will be measured by meditation. When you react quickly and foolishly, it is a clear sign that you do not have a relationship with God and or your relationship needs to be improved. Hallelujah. People of God demonstrate and display care to all regardless of who they are. Treat people right. Do right. The scripture states, even a servant will look at you as a parent if you take the time to treat that person in a kind way. Hallelujah. Speak to them appropriately with loving kindness. Hallelujah. From a child on up through adult age, that person will care for you because you have shown compassion and care for them. Actions promote reactions. When our actions are profitable, when our actions promote harmony, the reaction will do the same. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And the scripture just supports that. It's not all about family, but it is about how you treat someone. How are you living? Praise God. Scripture states that angry people stir up trouble. <laughs> angry people look for trouble. Angry people are full of trouble. And combined with that, <laughs> furious 
furious people. <laughs> Angry and furious. I say people because it represents men and women, and yes, both men and women can be angry. Both men and women are furious at times. Hallelujah. And when you're angry and when you're furious, you are easy. You are boastful about your ability to sin, about your ability to transgress against something because you're upset, because you're angry. And when you're angry, you normally are have no conscience about your actions. You're bitter, hallelujah, and ready at all times to stir up problems and to stir up trouble. A few weeks ago, we talked about the one who was ready at all times to have a good time. This week, we're talking about the one who was always ready to jump, one who was all ready to react, hallelujah. As I said about the one who was always looking to have a good time, I'll say the same thing about the one who's all ready to react, to jump, to fight, to stir up anger and strife. These individuals are unhappy. These individuals are living in a world of chaos. There is no order to their life. And they're angry. Hallelujah. They're bitter. And their actions demonstrate there is no order. Their actions demonstrate there is chaos on the inside. And because there's chaos on the inside, all they want to do is be angry on the outside. Hallelujah. Bitter. Again, angry people stir up trouble. Look for trouble. Let's make sure that does not apply to us. The people of God are not angry people. We are not people looking for trouble. We're not people promoting trouble. Hallelujah, we are people looking to promote good. We are people looking to promote good. Looking to ensure that our actions build. Looking to ensure that our actions Keep individuals informed and encouraged. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Moving quickly, part two, God commands humility. Humility is a modest or low view of one's own importance. Hallelujah. A place and honor of trust. Humbleness. In the world today, we see self-preservation, self-awareness, self-worth, and improvement. That's all you hear today. These are the buzzwords in the world today, and everybody you know is on a self-help, or reinventing themselves some type of mode. Hallelujah. Today, people of God, our lesson is providing a new way of self-motivation and reinvention, and that is by way of humility. Glory to God. Certain things will impact your journeys in life. There is no question about it. But time and time again, history and experience have dictated pride is a downfall for many. We get so caught up in our accomplishments at times we forget and allow our accomplishments to cloud our path, to cloud our actions, to cloud what we're doing. Hallelujah. Pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction again derived from your own achievements. Wise or foolish, the scripture notes a man's pride shall bring him down, but honor shall uphold the humble spirit. But adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct shall uphold him. Hallelujah. Your actions can tear you down or your actions can lift you up. Your actions can tear others down 
and your actions can build others. Hallelujah. How are you living? How are you acting? Are you acting in a state of humility? Or are you running around in a prideful form or a prideful way? Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we are seeking God, when we are adhering to God's word, hallelujah, God will stand behind us. God will lift us up. Last week we talked about barriers, noting that, excuse me, uh, disagreements erect barriers. Hallelujah. Again, your choices can build or can pull down or build up. When we do what is right, we don't have to worry about it because our actions are aligning with the word of God and everything we do, every direction we follow by way of the word of God is profitable. Hallelujah. It builds. It lifts. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to be concerned. But when you're doing wrong, it is necessary to look over your shoulder at all times because you don't know when that wrong is coming back to you. Hallelujah. But when you do what is right, you build. When you do what is right, you solidify. You're doing what is honorable. You're promoting others over yourself. Hallelujah. You're promoting others over yourself. You're not putting self in front because when we have humility and we promote others, God promotes us. Hallelujah. Again, giving us direction on how to live this life, to go through more green lights than red lights. To make sure you are aligned. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about eliminating dross or waste, purification. The scripture states, who so is a partner with a thief? Again, part two, talking about humility. That 23rd of that 25th verse, whosoever is partner with a thief hated his own soul. You are a partner with a known thief, a person who steals another person's property. Hallelujah, the scripture states that you hate yourself. Certainly, if they are a thief, they have no allegiance and are obligation to you. In time of trouble, they will not come to your aid because they're a thief. <laughs> However, the fear of man, the fear and the goal to please man, to seek approval from man always lands you in a trap. As I said earlier, always lands you, or places you in a position to say, what have I done or how have I ended up here? Put your trust in God. God has all power. He can help you regardless. Again, the righteous shall see the end of the wicked. And part three, God is in control. Verses 29, excuse me, 26 through 27 of the 29th verse. God is in control. God is the ultimate judge. Ultimate is the end of a process. Hallelujah. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man, their judgment come from God. It doesn't come from politics. It doesn't come from any man or woman we know. Your judgment cometh from the Lord. Everything we do in this mortal body will be judged not by anyone else but God. Hallelujah. And the only thing that will last is how you acted, treated, and respected the people of God, the way of God. Have your actions been just, 
Are you a people pleaser? Do you, hallelujah, do right in the midst of wrong? Are you silent? Do you speak up? An unjust man by action or lack of action is an abomination to the just. Just as a person who acts right, that person is an abomination to the wicked. Hallelujah. An abomination is anything that causes disgust or hatred. My question to you is, are you an abomination to the righteous or the unrighteous? This is a question only you can answer. Seek God today for an ordered life. Our lesson next week is lesson number six, the superiority of wisdom found in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, verses 13 through 18. It will be the 10th of October. Our prayer for today, dear God, help us seek your wisdom and to display it in our actions and our words so that this world will benefit from your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining.